I think we're, we're steadily developing the right mentality and, and the right focus and approach. Um, and I, I'm excited to put the ball down again tomorrow and, and, and see where we're at again. Hey, Coach. Uh, Glenn West with Go247. You, you guys seem to be rotating a lot of first-teamers with the, the cornerbacks group. Just just talk about some of those guys and, and just how close you are to maybe pinning down on some of those rotations that you're going to be looking for in the first couple of weeks. Yeah, we got great competition there. I mean, we got four older guys that we feel can play winning football and then two younger guys that are really come on. Um, you know, I, I see that being just that continuing competition. We're going to evaluate it again after the game Saturday. But um, a, a position that we were a little bit concerned about the depth coming in has kind of been a position that's developed into almost a strength. Um, so I'm excited to see where that goes. And I love the competition that's, that's being bred there. And those guys, I love their approach every day. You know, they, the four older guys in particular, if there's a, a situation where they're up with the first team defense, they have obviously a great approach. But when there's a situation they're up with the second team defense, I see the same focus, the same mentality. All right, those guys just love to play. Hey, Coach Jacques Doucet, WAP-TV, here in the back. Um, Micah Baskerville is a guy that made a lot of tackles last year, and last year's last year. But um, what does he have to do to kind of move up in the, in the pecking order and get some more playing time? Yeah, I think Micah's doing a good job in camp, and we just got to keep, keep pressing. The one thing I love about Micah is he's kind of the jack. He could play all three spots. Uh, he's a very intelligent linebacker. Um, he, he's in the right spots. I just need to keep seeing him be, apply the physical part of the game, which, which he's doing a, a good job growing from there. Matt, Will Snow's here with The Advocate. When you have a defensive line like you do that is all four pretty capable pass rushers, how do you balance um, just sending four versus deciding when to apply maybe like extra pressure and send a blitz? Do you maybe feel like this season you might not have to blitz as much as you would maybe normally because of those four guys? Yeah, I think that has a lot to do with the situation, the, the team you're playing, okay, and the quarterback. You know, um, when you get involved with the, either the analytics part of the game, uh, a quarterback that – that can move with his feet. There's certainly times where you need to fill up another pass rush lane. Uh, there's also times where you need to get after him with four. So I, I, I love our front, okay, and I love the, the that they can generate pressure with four. But there's certainly still times to pressure. If you become one-dimensional to, to the offense, th then you make it easy on them. All right, and, and the reality is if you mix in enough pressure, it helps your four-man rush. Uh, it helps you get singles in the pass rush game. Coach, um, just through the early portions of practice, just it looks like you're so multiple. And I don't know if that's by design or if that's still trying to feel out who kind of fits where. Uh, is, could you kind of allude or answer, I guess, you know, are you planning to be that multiple with personnel packages or is it really just figuring it out as you That's going? a great question. No, I think there's, there's a little bit of both of that. I, 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 we're intentional with our multiplicity. Okay, and the more the more looks you can give the quarterback, and then also, I mean, kind of to, to the point that guys have brought up in here, uh, with the competition, guys deserve different roles, and, and we want to put our football players in the best position to succeed. All right, so sometimes that means putting in different sub packages based on situations. Brody Miller with the Athletic. I guess this might be obvious, but when you have a guy like Mason Smith that can just cause disruption by himself sometimes, how does that kind of change the the freedom you have as a play caller? Sure, I think the the one thing that you can't. I mean, when you have a any type of dominant dominant defensive lineman, it, it covers up for mistakes, and it covers up for mistakes that you make as a play caller, right? I mean, it, great players sometimes overcome coaching, right? And uh, he, he's a guy, along with some other ones, that being dominant up front helps you. And anytime you can change the line of scrimmage, uh, that's disruptive to the offense. And not just in the pass game. We get so caught up in defensive linemen applying pressure to the quarterback. And although that's incredibly important in college football, it still comes down to whipping the guy across from you in the run game. All right, Coach, Jacob Verdant from the Verdant Verdict. Defensive schemes are similar to puzzles. What would you say is the most important piece to your puzzle? Yeah, that everybody understands it. 
right? You, you, you can't be – until guys are able to understand and execute, that, that, that's the number one thing. So kind of like way back when I first got here, you got to make it teachable, learnable, and then executable. And, and that's the key to it. And the, I think the further you progress, the more multiple you can become. Uh, Matt, Sheldon Mickles at The Advocate. Um, th this uh, school has been known for DBU and linebackers a little bit. It's been a while since the defensive line. The, um, can you allude to the uh, depth you have there now and also um, <clears throat> the options and flexibility? To, uh, how comfortable are you with what Ali Gay and BJ give you? Yeah, I think Al Ali and BJ are doing a great job off the edge, you know. Savion's coming along on the edge as well. Uh, Desmond's applying some, some competition off the edge. You know, Quincy is getting better and better with every opportunity. Uh, and the thing about that, too, is they, they're doing a good job where they can play multiple, multiple alignments on the front. And, and that gives you great flexibility. And also, when you get, start getting into game week, it allows you to get the best matchups you possibly can in situational football. Coach uh, Tim Buckley with Tiger Rag, sticking with that, with Ojolari in particular, how much of the way you plan to use him is, is it's just suited to his skill set? How much of it has to do with the fact you got Gay on the other side? And then in terms of the next level, is that like what his skill set is potentially at the next level? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I hate to say this, but I you get so so caught up. All I'm worried about is the next practice, the next – do I think BJ has a, a, a skill set that, you know, has a chance to be elite? Absolutely. Um, and as far as your question comparing him to Ali, they are a little bit different. I mean, BJ excels in, in space. Um, BJ is a guy that he can come off the edge, but he still can hold an interior gap as a six technique. He, we feel like he can whip a tight end. But we're not going to put him in a four-eye inside, a, inside a, uh, a tackle where Ali gives us a little bigger body that can do those types of things. Ali can slide around on third down, you know. Um, so they are different. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Hey, Coach Cookie Riley with The Advertiser. I was sort of curious as to how the depth chart at linebacker sort of shaping up. I know West Weeks is, seems like he's created a bit of a role for himself as well. Yeah, I think we've had good competition there too. I've, I've been really pleased with, in general, how – as a defensive unit, our guys are competing, challenging each other, uh, still in a positive way, pushing each other in the meeting room. I've been pleased with their approach uh, and their focus on, I'm going to take advantage of my rep. Uh, Wes is certainly a guy that's improved from spring, and I, we got a lot of trust in Wes to go out and execute. Hey, Coach. Leah Van with The Advocate. Uh, we've seen a lot of Colby Richardson in practice. Where do you see his role being this season, and what, have, what has impressed you about him? Yeah, Kobe's one of those four older guys I was talking about that's continuing to compete. Uh, I love his approach every day. I mean, you're talking about a guy that's going to take advantage of every opportunity LSU gives you away from the football field. I love the way he approaches nutrition. I love the way he approaches training. I love the way he takes care of his body in the training room. And, and then when you go out on the field, all right, those habits show. Um, he's a guy that, that, that when giving opportunities, he takes advantage of it. And uh, I'm so pleased he's here. And, and aside from that, the one thing off the field, I think he brings us a great presence. He's a great teammate. Coach Peter Roddick is from the Reveille. Kind of circling back to BJ, what have you seen from him kind of as a leader, not just with the defensive line, but with the defense as a whole? Yeah, I love, number one, that BJ, I mean, he, he's one of our most coachable guys on defense. He yearns to learn, which is huge, right? Um, I love the, the, that he's a man of character. Uh, I, when a guy in our room talks about BJ, they talk about him doing the right things on and off the field. And that, you know, that accountability shows up on the field. Hey, Coach, uh, Harold Perkins seems to have great speed moving sideline to sideline and for a freshman, uh, how is he doing so far with you? Yeah, Harold, like you just said, his speed and his athleticism flash. I absolutely love how Harold approaches the game. Uh, I love how Harold wants to be corrected. 
with that being said, it's, you know, I, I got to look at my practice script, but it's practice 13 for him. So every day is a new learning experience you can imagine. Uh, he's seen things that he, he hasn't seen before. He's being exposed to different things. So it's definitely been a learning process for Harold. Hey, Coach, uh, just a couple of returning players that you guys are really relying on here early. Um, you know, Coach Kelly's been very complimentary of Major Burns at safety. Just maybe talk about what's kind of stood out to you about him and then also uh, Greg Penn, another linebacker that you're coaching up. Just what, what has allowed him to take that leap this fall? Yeah, the thing that, else that stands out about Major is he sees the game, he speaks the game. He's a great communicator. Um, some guys, when, when the offense comes out, they don't always process fast, right? And, it, and it's, it, it, it's a process to teach them how to process formations, down and distance, splits within the call and the execution of the defensive system. Major does a great job of processing that and then getting it out and communicating. Uh, the other thing I've been pleased about Major is I think from the technical end of it, he's continued to improve every practice. Uh, I've been very pleased with him. Um, Greg, I love the physical part that Greg's been bringing. Uh, when he, you know, he got challenged coming out of the spring, he needs to be a little more physical, and he's done that. Pat Timlin, uh, NBC 33. Go back to the cornerbacks. Makai Gardner, what have you noticed from him in camp and what's really stood out from the work ethic that he brings? Yeah, I think he's had a great summer. I'd say uh, the number one thing, I, I mean, he's gotten faster. Uh, Jake Flint and his staff have done a great job with him, and you can see that. He's moving better. He's staying on top of routes more in press. Uh, obviously, his size gives you a great advantage, and, and with his mo improved movement, it's, it's, it's made it even more evident. Mike Jones, I mean, obviously Clemson played that kind of hybrid role a little, then last year had a little bit of a transition. I guess just in your time with him, how have you seen him kind of fully learn how to be that, that inside linebacker role? Yeah, I think Mike is learning and still continues to learn that position, you know, and, and it is different. I mean, it's different from the, the standpoint of seeing the clutter in your face, whether it's a puller or a swapper. Uh, we're out on the perimeter, everything you're fitting from outside in. Um, so every day that, that he does, you, you see him get a little quicker, right, a little more confident. Um, but it's certainly, it, it's different than when he was out on the edge, and you can tell sometimes. I'm just curious, is, is the nickel now the new base, and how is your nickel progressing? Now? That's a great question. So we match, I mean, like if they come out with, with numerous tight ends, um, then we'll go to base. Um, but the reality is most people now want to play in 11 personnel. And, and so, yeah, when we're in 11 personnel, we're basing out of a, a, what we call a big nickel or buffalo. Uh, right now it's uh, Greg Brooks and Sage. Uh, Matt, we talked uh, a little bit about Major. Um, what does he do to kind of – or how are you gonna, maybe going to balance him and Joe with Joe being a proven SEC guy already? Um, is that just sort of a luxury to have – Two guys there at safety. How's it kind of shaping up between them? Absolutely. I mean, it's number one. It's great competition, and you know, as we said this before, this is a this is a bloody nose conference. Uh, you can't get through this and 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 be a great football team with just one guy. Uh, and, and that competition and the depth that's created, and we'll put them in situations where you may see them both on the field at times. You may not, um, but but we're going to need them both. I can promise you that. Matt, uh, one more thing on Ali Gay. Um, he, he had a really good year two years ago and then last year had the injury. When you come in, what do you see? Uh, what sticks out to you right away when you saw the film on him? Yeah, I, I think number one is length, right? He creates, I mean, he's got elite length. He, he's a good speed to power rusher. When he, he uses that elite length along with the speed, he can generate so much power. And, and the torque he generates on a tackle can just be different. Um, from just a mentality standpoint, the guy loves to be taught, and, and that's big. Hey, Coach, kind of an off-the-field question, but what made you get into coaching, and why do you coach? Uh, I think, number one, I love, I love the players. Um, it makes you feel young. Uh, I love the competition, and I still like the schematic part of the game. I like the the angles and the numbers and, and that part of the game. Thanks, guys.